16th of May 2019, last year, the Republic of Costa Rica announced that it will be phasing out the use of fossil fuel cars in its country by 2050. In making that announcement, Costa Rica, a tiny country in Central America, about 5 million people, making it roughly a four times less the size of Lagos, joined 20 other cities around the world and 13 other countries around the world, including the United Kingdom, Spain, Portugal, Sweden, Denmark, and a host of others. They will be phasing out fossil fuel cars in their countries anytime between 2030 and 2050. Interestingly, on the 26th of April last year, about the same time that Costa Rica was announcing uh, that it will be phasing out uh, fossil fuel driven cars in its country, the then managing director of NNPC was announcing the commitment of Nigeria to boost its oil production by up to 4 million barrels per day from the current 2 million barrels or so per day. Now, the contrast cannot be starker that while the countries to which we are hoping to sell our oil are signaling that they are moving away from fossil fuel cars, we, the exporter of oil, are announcing that we are we're moving much more into the production, uh, investment and production of fossil fuel. The question becomes, who are we going to sell our oil to in 2030, 2050 and beyond? when those countries that are our, the importers of our oil are clearly signaling that as a result of uh, climate change action, they are moving away from uh, uh, the use of fossil fuel car. It is now forecasted that we'll get up to 90% less uh, from the projected earnings from oil and gas for 2020. Now, why we hope that the impact uh, of COVID-19 on oil will be temporary, the potential impact of climate change on oil could well be more long-lasting, if not permanent. In fact, it is possible to envisage that uh, climate change could mark the end of uh, the oil era in the world. Before we scoff, let us not forget that the Stone Age did not end because the world ran out of stone. No, the Stone Age ended because the world found new, modern, innovative ways of doing things. And it could well be the case for oil. Who knows? In any case, the point that we are making is that climate change is not just one abstract environmental thing somewhere which we can wish away, but it's a phenomenon that poses fundamental challenges to the socio-economic existence uh, and survival of this country. Think again about the importance or the impact of climate change on agriculture. Now, because over 85% of African and Nigerian agriculture inclusive is rain-fed, uh, little changes in rainfall or weather patterns generally can cause significant uh, impact on crop and agricultural yield. In fact, there are projections that if we do not uh, embrace comprehensive adaptation policies in the field of agriculture, uh, we could lose, as a country, between 10 to 25 percent of our agricultural yield by 2080. And some parts of the North may also uh, lose as much as 50 percent of the agricultural yield. Now, this is really uh, staggering. And I often think for myself, like, what would have been my case if uh, climate change uh, onset had happened earlier than now? Because my parents were farmers. And although they were teachers, but a lot of their proceeds came from famine. And the rice field that used to uh, yield for my parents about 15 to 20 bags of 50 kg paddy rice in those days now struggles to produce up to 8 or 10 uh, bags of paddy rice. This is not just the story of my parents. This is the story of millions of farmers up and down the breadth and length of this country who are struggling to feed themselves and their family because of a significant loss of uh, yield uh, occasion by climate change. And that means that Nigeria will continue to struggle to feed itself up until 2020, 2050, 2080, and beyond if a comprehensive action is not taken uh, on climate change in the area of agriculture. Uh, last year, around uh, October, I was in the United Kingdom on a, a speaking engagement 
when the uh, chief of my town in Enugu State began to send uh, SOS texts with uh, amazing pictures, really uh, uh, distressing uh, photos of flooding that has uh, washed away parts of my community and submerged uh, vast portions of farmland. My father is 85 years old. I talked to him about it. He told me that all through his life, he has never seen anything uh, like that. And now as a country, we are getting quite used to uh, large scale flooding year on and year out. We had a big large scale flooding in 2011, 2012, 2013, 14, and one of the worst ones to happen last year. With many, many towns, for example, in Yobe, Adamawa, and even Lagos here, completely washed away by unprecedented flooding. Time will fail me to get into the negative impact of climate change in our biodiversity, in water, in our coastline, with sea level rise of 0.5 meters, potentially wiping away 60 to 70 percent of the productive area in the Niger Delta. By taking concerted and comprehensive well-planned action on climate change, we will be reducing our dependence on uh, exhaustible natural resources like uh, oil. I mean, one of the tragedies of this country is that as a nation, we have so tightly fixed our mouth to the breast of mother oil and sucked ourselves to intellectual uh, amnesia and stupor. And that is why we have wasted years, decades uh, of opportunity that we had to diversify our economy away from oil and have allowed the granite pyramid in the north to disappear, the cocoa business in the west to disappear, and the palm oil business in the east to completely disappear. And now we've put all our eggs in one basket to the consequence that when something like COVID-19 hit Nigeria, we were lying almost prostrate uh, on, on, on our tummy. And so by taking comprehensive action on climate change, we decrease our dependence on natural or uh, limited natural resources and diversify our economy, building a much more resilient economic system. The other thing is also that Nigeria is blessed with abundant natural resources which we can actually, uh, renewable natural resources I mean, which we can harvest and harness in order to power a green revolution. We are blessed with wind, with hydro, with tidal, and potentially with geothermal, and of course with solar energy. And it has been calculated that as a country we can actually build a solar farm in the Sahara, in the northern part of Nigeria, that will supply all the energy need that we have in this country and leave, up, leave us with access to export to other parts of Africa and including Europe. Another clear example of how action on climate change can help to grow our economy is gas flaring. We can convert the gas that we're flaring and wasting to uh, powering uh, uh, energy transition uh, in homes. Currently, about 70 to 80 percent of Nigerians use or uh, depend on a uh, three piece wood and use biomass, dung, sawdust, and all of this uh, wasteful uh, energy to cook. Why don't we uh, stop gas flaring and then channel the gas uh, that we've been flaring and wasting to supplying millions of homes across this country with LPG gas? So you see that there are many areas we are taking action on climate change can actually help to boost our economy. At an individual level, there are also opportunities. I'm sure many of you would have heard of uh, the 29-year-old uh, mother of three in Tasa Bashikufi, who uh, made fame by converting waste uh, plastics into uh, beautiful interlocking tiles. But there are opportunities everywhere. And one of the things that gives me hope about this message of a green economic transition in Nigeria is actually that it can create more jobs and help to deal with the issue, issue, this issue of our youth unemployment, which is plaguing the country. I know uh, from the figures of the National Bureau of Statistics that the oil and gas, although accounting for about 70% of our revenue, has been adding less than 0.01% of jobs a year on and uh, year on in Nigeria. In some years, it added just uh, as little as 550 jobs. 
However, by embracing the green energy revolution, we will be creating more jobs because uh, of the nature of the supply chain and the economic activities implicated in uh, a distributive renewable energy. Whether you're talking about hybrid or mini grids or energy auditing or installation of solar panels and, or, uh, or, uh, or standard setting or decoupling and all of those sorts of areas, they offer opportunity for more hands-on and for more jobs which will take people off the street. Also, there is the whole area of green entrepreneurship like manufacturing green soap, green shampoo, designing green app, uh, waste collection, uh, green blogging, uh, green advocacy, etc., etc., which responsible citizens could engage into and not only become productive, but also help to usher in this green transition. It is important that as a country and as individuals, we begin to see that climate change is one of the most challenging problems facing us, and that we have to again, at both a national level, but at a corporate level and an individual level, begin to think imaginatively of the range of actions that we can take to respond effectively to climate change. You see, climate change may be the biggest challenge facing Nigeria and the rest of the world, but it is also a great opportunity to do things differently, to transform our economy into something that is more equitable, more egalitarian, and more resilient society. You see, a climate change may be one of the biggest challenges facing us as a nation, but like in life, most of the other, other issues of life, the biggest challenge uh, often presents the biggest opportunities. And my hope and my prayer is that as a country, as individuals, we will rise up and take the bull by the horn and begin to design, to rise up uh, to the challenges of climate change and use that as opportunity to design a new kind of society and world order. The challenge may be formidable, but when there is a will, there is a way. And I think that as a nation, we are equal to the task and we can do it. Let us rise and build for the time is now.